The Miami Florida Hurricanes, seven and six in 2018, four and four in conference, four returning starters on offense, six on defense, experience returning number 83 in the country, number 10 in the conference. Their over under is eight and a half. To go over, it is plus 100, so it's even odds. To go under, it is minus 120, so it is more likely that they hit eight wins as opposed to going over. Uh, but Vegas sees it very closely. It's, right? Yeah, that's that's um, that's a normal bet. That's not too bad. Manny Diaz, former defensive coordinator, takes over for Mark Richt, who decided rather than fire his son, he would just retire from the game, uh, which is funny because his son lost his job anyway. So it's well, know, yeah. I mean, when that happens. You bring somebody in to fire his son. Mark Richt is a very principled man. And That's right. There are very few of those left in, in college football. In football period, really. Like, right, and just in life. Yeah, they're just in life. Um, so Diaz, he's been the defense coordinator at Mississippi State, Texas, Louisiana Tech. Then he started at Miami in 2016. Uh, this is, I think it's perfect job for him. Perfect Got job. the head coaching job at Temple. And then for like turned around like 45 uh, minutes. <laughs> and then Miami was like, oh, wait, wait, wait. Don't sign that paper yet. Yep. Like, Come here. Did you sign? You already signed it. Okay. Well, we'll pay it anyway. Yeah. And they matter. paid a buyout. They paid a the buyout. So Temple has a free coach. Yeah. And so Temple, of course, gets a payday from hiring him, and then and they probably use that buyout to pay out uh, uh, old Rod over at uh, Northern Illinois. But let's let's jump into this offense here. Quarterback it's probably Tate Martell's job to lose. I think so. Uh, Rozier and Perry showed no development last year. Uh, they. Now they were probably good practice players, from what I heard. They were they were good in practice, but Akosi Perry and Malik Rozier like did nothing in games to to move along this offense. Running back DJ Dallas could be a star. They hired in Dan Enos as offensive coordinator from Alabama. He was Alabama's passing game coordinator, uh, and what what is it? Quarterbacks coach, etc. So he they he should run more pro set here than he did at Alabama. Uh, at Alabama, that was Loxley's offense. Like that's he was the one that that developed that thing. Uh, they were the number four total defense in the country last year. Number eighteen scoring defense. Number one in the country in havoc rate. Now that includes a lot of different things: sack total and tackles for loss, and uh, you know getting behind the line of scrimmage, all that kind of mess. Uh, five of their front seven return. Like that's of their starting front seven. So that's always good. If this Did team, those numbers take into affect the bowl game or no? Uh, well, yes. I mean, they they obviously take in the bowl game, but man, they I'm, I'm not talking about rushing. I know, defense. I know that's only thirteen one out of thirteen games to account for. Yeah, but that was an ugly. Game. Well, I mean, that's probably why the scoring defense was number eighteen instead of like number twelve, right? I mean, they they but they still only gave up thirty five points. They yeah, just, but yardage and 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 or just rushing rushing yeah. defense. I thought that would have if if this team had been able scoring. to score. Even just slightly more than they did last year. They could have got blown uh, out by somebody else. Well, they they could have been a top ten team last year. Like they remember they were a top ten team the year before, and they just could not do anything on offense whatsoever. The schedule sets up nicely, but our, the main question is, of course, what is Manny Diaz going to be like as a head coach? I really don't know if I like my prediction on this. <laughs> okay, but. Uh, but I've got them at ten and two. Whoa! I think they've got significantly more talent than a lot of these teams. Their home schedule is awesome. Their road schedule is awesome. Like they are, they don't play Clemson. Like their toughest out of conference game is Florida. I I think they lose the Florida game. I think they lose at Pitt. But you know, you you've got at North Carolina, Bethune Cookman, Central Michigan. You got Virginia Tech at home after a bye week. You got Virginia at home right after Virginia Tech. You got Georgia Tech at home, who we just talked about. Uh, you play at Pitt, at Florida State. You got Louisville at home. You got at uh, at FIU and at Duke to close out the season. I think talent-wise, if Tate Martell can just get the ball to these playmakers, because they got them. They, they do got have playmakers, them. and this defense is legit. I like this team. I like the defensive-minded head coaches, obviously, more than the offensive mind. And, and yes, of course, you're going to get your Lincoln Rileys that will be able to put up just ridiculous points. But if this offense can score, and I I trust Danny Nose to be able to score points. Like, he, what he was able to do... Well, they just have talent. They have but, talent. Talent's going to score points. Even, even still, they had talent last year and weren't able to put up points, right? 
but that had a lot to do with the coaching scheme. Yeah. Dan Enos at Arkansas with Brandon Allen and Austin Allen and whoever, like he, under Brett Bielema, he was able to put up, you know, over 30 points a game in the SEC. What is he going to do against an ACC schedule like this? It, like, and none of these are ridiculous defenses, right? Now, Virginia Tech, I, maybe they lose that one, but it's at home after a bye week, right? Uh, maybe they lose to Virginia, but it's at home, you know, it, and they've got significantly more talent than Virginia. Virginia is still a work in progress. I think that this team, it like, they needed a kick in the pants. And I think that Rick resigning and Manny Diaz taking the reins, Manny Diaz was what held that team together last year. And I think that this pushes them even further ahead. I think that they go 10 and 2, 7 and 1 in conference. I've got them 9 and 3. I think if you were to look at teams' home away record, you would find that outside of your teams that win 10, 11 games every year, that it that it doesn't it doesn't swing as much as you think it does. And then I also think that but well, sometimes teams, teams are more comfortable at home, and it makes it easier to lose games. Like that's yeah, that was the thing about Alabama, down, whatever. Yeah. And then and then that, you also Alabama for years, like every game that they lost was at home. Like they, right. they weren't losing the road. And games. then I would also think that there are certain coaches you don't want to play them coming off their bye week, but for the most part, I would bet teams are really close to 50-50 off their bye, Agreed. or more closer to the to the mean than. I mean, if they're an 11 win team every year or a 10 win team every year, like Alabama or your Clemson's or something like that, then, then yeah, obviously they, they win all their games. Yeah. But I think they're going to go nine and three. I think all three games they could lose are all going to be home games because yeah. I think those are the best coached teams are going to play with comparable talent. I, no way Virginia has the talent they have, but Virginia might be the best coached team that they're going to play against. Yes, I do agree with I, that. I love Justin Fuente, I want good things for him. Hurt my feelings last year, but I still think he's a really good head coach. He's more proven at what he can do than what Manny Diaz is. Yeah. And and trust me, Virginia Tech's not lacking in dudes either. No. Okay. So, and then uh, Florida, Dan Mullins, I think all of those are home games. And I think I think you could easily lose those games. Now, there's a chance you could win all those games. Yes. And we're looking at a big time. ACC championship game that we haven't yeah. had in a long time. See, well, this is the now, problem the ACC has. See, that's, two years ago, you had Miami as a yep. top five team. Yeah, but the, we all we all watched that team, and yeah. we all knew they yeah. had no chance, right? Yeah. Like, like, their record said they were one thing, but they weren't. That yeah. schedule that year was so – this schedule. Could be the same thing. Could be. I mean, like, no, if, Miami, Florida, if Florida ends up being – an eight-win team or a seven-win team, I don't think they will be, but let, let's say they just something happens and all kind of wheels fall apart or whatever. They've had a rough offseason, by the way. That's not out of the realm of questions. But if that happens and Miami goes on a run here, I think I think Manny Diaz is going to have a tougher, more physical, aggressive team than anything Mark Rick has had in a long time. I thought that that Miami team back a couple years back was fraudulent. I think most of the national media thought they were fraudulent. Yes. Only people that didn't were people that were trying to hype the game up because they needed a record. Yes. And, and they needed they needed eyeballs to come watch this thing. Everyone felt Clemson's going to kill them. Yeah. And Clemson killed them. Yeah, they did. Now you're right. You're right. I'm with you. Uh, so I've got them 10 and 2. You got them 9 and 3. Nine, we're not, we're, we're not that over, far though, the number, right? Yeah, over 8.5. Yeah. Yeah. Which, I mean, it's it, like, is that. Well, so the over is even money. Yeah. But, I mean, the way the schedule sets up, it's just, it is what it is. Let's move on. 